My name is Paul. Today I'm going to do something I did before, but just another view of something really simple. I'm making cheeseburgers. Um, anyway, let's get started. Okay, what do we need to make cheeseburgers? Frying pan or a grill. Ketchup. Cheese. No, sorry, I mean sliced cheese. That's better. Hamburger buns. Butter or margarine to grease the pan. That's because I'm going to grill the hamburger buns. And you don't grill the hamburger buns on a bare pan. Otherwise, it kind of tends to burn rather than making them tasty. Or toasty, in this case. You also need a spatula. Since it's getting dark in here, I'm filming this on a white background so you can see it. A plate to put the food on after you've finished cooking it. A lid, which helps to melt the cheese. This is optional. A knife. I use this to cut the butter and also to cut the hamburger out of the package. This particular knife has a sheath on it. Now you can see the knife without the sheath. Now, have I forgotten anything? Oh yes, the hamburger. Now, when I open a package of hamburger, I'll store it in the fridge because I'm not going to refreeze it. So, the thing is that to make sure that it doesn't go bad or that it doesn't, uh, as in this case, it has bl bled a little right here. There's some blood from it oozing out. Um, what I will do is I will put it into a, I was going to say Ziploc bag, which is the same thing, but this particular bag brand is uh, Store It. But any of the resealable closure bags that you can use. Here's the hamburger. Here's the hamburger outside of the bag. Now, one of the things that is done by the supermarket is along the wrapper here are these little marks. And there's another one right there and so on. Those marks indicate that if you cut there, you'll get one a one quarter pound piece of hamburger. So I will do that. Oh yeah, a knife. As Jack the Ripper was once reported to have said, my knife is so sharp and it cuts so well. I can't wait to use it. And it's probably similar since he was using it. He was using his knife to cut a particular type of meat. Um, human meat, but... I'm reminded of a movie I saw where this executioner is getting ready to um, cut up this woman who is part of the resistance to the uh, king's rule. And so he's sharpening his axe on a grindstone. He says, don't worry, lady. It won't hurt till I hit the bone. <laughs> nice promise, I guess. rest of the hamburger goes back in the bag which means it can go back in the refrigerator one thing I want to do is compress these patties down because one thing I've found is that if you don't get them pressed down enough they tend to be too thick and then they'll cook but you get them raw in the middle now if you like raw in the middle and I do like it on occasion because I, I mean I've scared people because I've eaten raw hamburger in front of them right out of the fridge and of course they tell you not to do that that's um but i mean i did that when i was a kid uh sometimes they call raw hamburger steak tartare but anyway so i need to make this oh not too thick
but thick enough so it'll have some bulk, but not just too thick so it overflows the the burger, the um, the cheeseburger bun, I should the burger bun, the bun, so it doesn't overflow the bun. Anyway, that's about right. So I'll do the same thing with this chunk. So now we have two burgers of about the same thickness. Now, they're not exactly even, so I'll steal a little out of one to make them about the same size. That's about right. First, I'm going to turn the pan on about medium. This has six indicators on it from low all the way to six. I'm going to try about four. I'll open this package of butter. best I can, given my arthritis and everything else I have problems. Cut up uh, maybe the equivalent of a tablespoon or so. And drop that into the pan. Let it smoosh around the whole thing. I don't know if smoosh is a uh, technical term, but I'm going to turn the heat up just a bit because this should have uh, started to bubble a little bit more than it is. And if I wanted to toast the bread, I have to make it a little bit warmer. Toast the buns, that is. There we go. That's what I want to hear. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is sizzling. So I'm going to put the buns on first on the back. Plus the fact they've been out at room temperature, so they're a little bit cold. And we'll do that for maybe 30 or 40 seconds, roughly. Just enough to get it to toast off the bread back a little bit, because you want it toasted a little bit on the top. At least I do. It seems to make it work better. Uh, let's take a look at the first one. Uh, a little bit longer. So you can see. It is getting warm, which is good. I felt it a little bit warm. And then, ah! Ouch. Yeah, that's hot enough now. Now, since I want the inside toasted a little bit more, I'm going to do that for about one minute. And since I don't need the butter anymore, I'm going to return it to the fridge. As you can see, or maybe you can't, depending upon how much light there is, the buns get a little bit toasted. I guess they were out drinking last night. Anyway, I'm going to use, so I don't get scalded again, I'm going to take a look at my sink. Yeah, it's just coming on. It's going to get a little bit toasted about another 30, 40 seconds. And I'm going to go get a plate. Yeah, that's good. That's just about right. A little bit toasted. Not really, really toasted and not not too little and not burnt. They just got a little bit of toasting on it, so that's about right. Or it would be if I could get it out of the pan. Oh, come on now. Yeah, that one came out quite nice. The, the bottoms tend to do better than the tops. And so you can see, that's what it looks like. 
and put that on the counter next to it. Now, this pan is nice and hot, so it's time to do the most important part, the hamburgers. And I may want to turn this down a little bit because I don't want them to cook too fast. I'm going to take it down to four. I had it five while we're cooking the buns because I wanted them to cook a little bit better. But if it but if it cooks too fast, you end up with a problem I've had, which is the um, hamburger cooks on the outside, but the inside is raw. I sometimes like uh, medium rare hamburger, but sometimes I don't. In this case, I want to get it reasonably cooked. I have noticed sometimes hamburger tends to do exactly what Ralphie's tongue did to the flagpole. Well, maybe it wasn't Ralphie, but the kid who stuck his tongue on the flagpole in the movie. Well, you know, that movie, uh, Christmas Story, where the kid stuck, took a double dare and uh, stuck his tongue on the flagpole and he left part of it behind. Well, it seems like if you notice, that's exactly what happened here. I tried moving him a little bit and it stuck to the pan. Now, I'll mention something here because some of the other people who stay in this uh, place have mentioned it, that I forget to turn the fan on. But if I turn the fan on while I'm cooking this, you won't be able to hear anything I'm saying. So, normally presume that there would be a fan running to capture the uh, smell. Anyway, because I can see the edges cooked, so I'm going to turn these now. That's pretty good. Excellent. Now if only this one wouldn't bite me. Come on. Come on! Quit biting me! Let go of the plate! Let go of the pan! What is that? I'm going to turn down the heat a little down to three instead of four. Because it seems like it may be cooking a little fast. I don't know what it is about this. Oh, 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 I forgot the cheese. If I want the cheese to melt over it, I've got to put it on fast before it starts. Otherwise, I end up with cold cheese that's not melted. I should have peeled it first, but I got so interested telling you the story of my cheeseburgers, soon to be cheeseburgers, that. I forgot to set up properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a lid for about 30 seconds so that the cheese will melt because it will steam it. Now we'll let that steam them for maybe 30 seconds, maybe a little longer. You know, you can, you can just do it by um, rough guess. Um, after you've done it often enough, you'll get an idea. I haven't, I have not melted the cheese on my burgers often enough to know what's a good figure. Okay, let's take a look. Ah, that's fine. That's all I want, was for it to just melt them a little bit. By the way, be careful that you're wearing proper clothes because these things spit. And I mean, they spit grease. And when you get hot grease spit at you, that's probably 400 degrees. It stinks. Turn the heat off. There we go. There's my cheeseburgers. So you can see what they look like. And I'll dump the grease in the trash.
You know, I do not dump the grease down the sink because that's how you get cloth. That's grease that doesn't have to go down to the sink. A little bit of ketchup. Oh, that's a little bit of soap. Wrong song. I don't know. Has anybody done a ketchup song? That's all right. Just enough to add a little extra flavor. My brother, uh, I wanted to kill him once. He, we bought this really beautiful steak. Um, and does he put Worcestershire or steak sauce on it? No, he puts ketchup on it. Ketchup is for hamburgers and hot dogs. And anybody that says that you shouldn't put ketchup on a hot dog should be shot. I do not stand for intolerant people. Yes, I know that's hypocritical. It was meant to be. Those who, those who preach intolerance should be killed to tell, to tell them that we don't tolerate intolerance. Of course, that's being intolerant too. But anyway, there's my two cheeseburgers. Now I'm going to see how it tastes. Hopefully it'll taste pretty good. There's my plate of cheeseburgers. So anyway, I have my plate of cheeseburgers, so I'm going to try one. Picked at random. That's great. And unfortunately, I'll try to bring this close enough that you can see it. It's still pink in the middle. Which I don't know, I still need to I still need to cook it more. Um but I don't mind. I mean I like it well done, or at least completely cooked through, maybe not well done. But medium well will work. Okay, alright. I'm copping out instead of saying, Hey, I, I messed up. Instead of saying a worse word than messed, worse phrase than messed up, you can guess which word it is. No, and I don't need screwed up. Much worse. Anyway, I messed up and I should have cooked it longer, but I didn't. It's not ruined. It's just simply that it should have been cooked longer to get it well done instead of medium rare. But it's still delicious. It's still good. Good cheeseburger. Not bad. Okay. So anyway. Oh. Now it really is garbage and go get a pizza. You go order a pizza. I didn't say that. Hmm. <laughs> Just kidding, it is good. Don't tell me I'm not supposed to talk with my mouth full. I couldn't explain this until I finished eating and then you got to sit there or worse, I gotta go through and cut the video to get rid of the food so that I can tell you what I was thinking. That was delicious. I'm gonna finish the other one in a moment, but anyway. It ain't hard to do. Making cheeseburgers is fairly easy. You can have them any way you want. Whether you want them well done, or as in my case, medium rare. And you get the buns toasted. Now, yeah. And uh, it ain't that hard. If I can do it, I think almost anybody could. Anyway, my name is Paul. Thank you for watching. Email Paul at paul-robinson.us